Hello friends and welcome to the learning platform Aviation Live. Before the start of the video, remember, once you stop learning, you start dying. So let's start. In the last video, we learned about the functioning of airspeed indicator. And for those who missed that video, link is given in the description below. Today we will learn about different types of airspeed. There are four different types of airspeed. Let's start with the first one. Indicated airspeed, also abbreviated as IAS. As the name depicts, it is the speed indicated on the instrument. It is the most crude form of speed not detected for any type of error. Depending upon instrument, it can be expressed in knots or mile per hour. Instrument error is due to small manufacturing imperfections and gear wear of the instrument, whereas position error is the error in measuring the pressure reading due change in aircraft configuration like use of flap, speed brake or due aircraft maneuvering or with change of angle of attack as depicted on the screen. So if we correct these two errors with correct calibration of instrument, we will get the second type of airspeed that is calibrated airspeed. By definition, calibrated airspeed is the indicated airspeed corrected for instrument and pressure error. Now the question is how to determine calibrated airspeed. For this, calibration table is given in the aircraft manual by the manufacturer to determine CAS based on different configuration and IAS. As per this chart, if the aircraft in flaps up condition is flying at 110 knots of indicated airspeed, then its calibrated airspeed would be 108 knots. Roughly we can say that indicated airspeed and calibrated airspeed are almost equal. Moving to next type of error that is compressibility error. In a pitot tube functioning, air is assumed to be an ideal fluid that is incompressible. However, in reality, at high speed, roughly Mach 4 and above, air is compressed and errors are produced in measuring pressure. So, if we apply compressibility factor into calibrated airspeed, we will get the next type of airspeed which is equivalent airspeed. By definition, equivalent airspeed is the calibrated airspeed corrected for compressibility error. Moving to next type of error, that is density error. As we know that dynamic pressure depends on speed of the aircraft and air density. Or in other words, we can say that reading of airspeed indicator depends on speed of the aircraft and air density. We know that density decreases with increase in altitude. Low density means less number of air molecules. High density means more number of air molecules. So if an aircraft is flying in low density condition, Less air molecules will enter in pitot tube and less dynamic pressure will be read and ASI will indicate less air speed as compared to the aircraft flying in high density condition. True air speed commonly known as TAS is the air speed corrected for density error. This is real speed of the aircraft with respect to the air. At sea level indicated air speed is equivalent to true air speed. Let's take an example of two aircraft. One is flying at sea level with 195 knots of indicated airspeed and another aircraft also flying with same indicated airspeed but at 5000 feet of altitude and its true airspeed will be more. Rough formula for the calculation of true airspeed is TAS increases by 2% with every 1000 feet increase of altitude. Let's discuss an example. If an aircraft is flying at 100 knots of indicated airspeed at sea level and you want to calculate its true airspeed at 10,000 feet of altitude, apply the formula of 2% increase with 1000 feet increase in altitude. By just a simple mathematical calculation, you will find the answer. The true airspeed will be 120 knots. Now we will discuss the last type of airspeed that is ground speed, commonly abbreviated as GS. It is the actual speed of the aircraft in relation to the ground. 
it is true airspeed corrected for wind. If an aircraft is flying and it experiences headwind, it will be slowed down by the wind and its speed in relation to the ground will decrease. In case of tailwind, aircraft will be pushed by the wind and its speed in relation to the ground will increase. If the wind is calm, true airspeed and ground speed will be equal. Now see a little summary. If we have indicated airspeed and we correct it for instrument and position error, we will get calibrated airspeed. If then we apply compressibility correction, we will get equivalent airspeed. If then we apply the density correction, we will get true airspeed. And finally, if we apply the wind correction, we will get ground speed of aircraft. It is important to understand the definitions of each of the speed as each is used for different purpose in aviation. As IAS is the measure of dynamic pressure, so it is used for the calculation of structural speed limits, takeoff and landing speeds, stall speeds in different configurations, minimum control speed and different performance speeds of the aircraft. On the other hand, TAS is the true airspeed of the aircraft in relation to the air. So it is used in ATC flight plan, Mach speed calculation, endurance calculation and general flight planning aspects. Finally, the ground speed is the actual speed of the aircraft in relation to the ground. That is why it is used for calculating flight time, estimated time calculation, fuel consumption calculation, and range calculation. As an aviator, you need to understand some important relation between speeds. If an aircraft is climbing and maintaining a constant equivalent airspeed, then with increasing altitude, its true airspeed and Mach number both will increase. If that aircraft now maintains a constant true airspeed during climb, its equivalent airspeed will decrease but its Mach number will continue to increase. If an aircraft is climbing while maintaining a constant Mach number, its true airspeed and equivalent airspeed both will decrease. I hope this video will help you understanding the basic of different airspeeds. If you like our efforts, don't forget to subscribe and share. Thank you.